People in the Denver area are digging out this morning after getting slammed by a spring snowstorm. This is a live look at Denver right now. Dangerous conditions and heavy blowing snow forced the closure of multiple highways, including I-70 east and west of the Denver metro. Even the snow plows were having trouble in the extreme conditions. Some areas, as Lisa Green has been telling us this morning, picked up as much as two feet of snow. A very good Thursday morning, everyone, and thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today. Kyle Bosch here with Lisa Bedeau as we get started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we do have some breaking news that we're following right now in Moorhead. Police there are on the scene of an apparent construction site theft on the city's south side. Dispatchers say it's happening in the 1500 block of 36th Avenue South, just west of the Village Green neighborhood. Now, not a lot of details are available right now from officers, but we have a Valley News Live crew on the way, so stay with us live on air and, of course, online at valleynewslive.com for updates on this breaking story. Let's get right over to weather and traffic on the ones now as we're at 651, and we start with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. Today, we are enjoying nice, quiet conditions compared to other parts of the Midwest and, of course, Denver we just told you about. We had dry weather yesterday and more on the way today for most of us. There's the moon there up in the uh, top part of your screen getting ready to set in the western horizon, and we're starting to see that sunrise on the opposite side. And we're looking at sunny conditions for today. We're starting off pretty chilly, but once that sun rises, we'll get going and see those temperatures back into the mid 40s for your highs. And in addition to that, wind will be on the light side and generally out of the south for today. So looking pretty good with temperatures about five degrees above the average. Here's a look at our radar and satellite composite. We've got the clouds from that big system moving away, and there are some areas of some low level clouds up north. And in addition to that, some snow showers just north of the border there uh, that may be bringing a couple of flakes to our viewers who live right along the Canadian border, and that may be the case into the later part of the day, too. Here's a look at the tri-state view. Still some snow showers in far southeastern Minnesota, but those are all moving on with that system, and we've got, again, a dry weather for the most part for those of us in basically the southern two-thirds of the valley today. Here's a look at our temperatures. It's pretty chilly out there. It's 13 degrees right now in Bemidji and 15 in Bedette. 19 in Jamestown and in Fargo, and 23 in Grand Forks. So morning to wear that winter coat. One of those days to layer up because you might want to take that off later on this afternoon as temperatures warm into the mid-40s for your highs. So mostly sunny skies and a few clouds again in the northern valley. For Friday, a, new, a different story here. We're going to be seeing a chance for some rain, especially later in the day, switching over to some snow showers just in time for that drive home from work and maybe going to your Easter holiday destinations. Something to pay attention to. Even though our temperatures are going to be pretty mild for most of the day, it's later in the day we'll be seeing that better bet for precip. It may linger into Saturday morning and with temperatures below freezing, uh, we might have some slick spots for Saturday morning. 39 the high Saturday. Easter Sunday looks good. 51 with partly cloudy skies, and we continue warming into next week. Let's check in now with Al for a traffic update. Lise, this is also one of those days when folks are going to want to be paying extra attention. I suspect there may be some uh, Easter holiday uh, travel going on as well. It's really busy out here on uh, Interstate 94 this morning, uh, particularly westbound, but eastbound traffic is pretty darn thick as well. And as I approach the tri-level, I can also tell you that I-29 traffic is, uh, is pretty heavy as well. Our community is definitely waking up after a slow start, so make sure you're driving extra carefully today. Make sure you allow folks to yield and make sure you use those signal lights and keep those lights on until the sun's up. Drive carefully today, Al Ahmed Valley today traffic. 6.54 now after the Valley broke the internet last Friday <laughs> trying to get Garth Brooks tickets. It's round two a little bit later this morning. Ticket sales for his two Fargo concerts in May resume at 10 a.m. And here's a reminder for you. Tickets are $75 each and can only be purchased online at the Fargo Dome website, FargoDome.com, or on the phone by calling 1-844-4GARTH-B. Officials say registering an online account ahead of time with your name, address, and credit card information will make things go faster. Now, the ticket limit is eight per household. There are no exchanges or refunds, and some seats are mobile tickets only. That means they'll be delivered to your phone three hours before the show. Now, if you did get tickets last Friday, they are still good. For now, Brooks is set to play two shows at the Fargo Dome, Friday, May 6th, and Saturday, May 7th, but there have been rumors, and he may add even more dates depending on how sales go this morning. There will be no prison time for the man who experts say threw the punch that left former NDSU football player Isaac Colstead with severe brain damage. Colstead suffered critical injuries during a fight outside a Mankato, Minnesota bar in 2014. Trevor Shelley pleaded guilty this week to first-degree felony assault as part of his plea deal. 
He was facing up to 20 years in prison, but will instead spend just a year in county jail. Surveillance video of the incident shows Colstead knocking a man to the ground, then Shelley punching Colstead from behind. Colstead fell and hit his head on the pavement. Another man involved in the fight, former University of Minnesota quarterback Philip Nelson, also took a plea deal to avoid jail time. We're hearing new details about a police standoff in West Fargo last week at the Roadway Inn Motel. Court documents say 37-year-old Jan Michael Wangstead fired several shots at police. One of them went just over the head of one of the officers. Officers did not return fire because there was a man between them and Wangstead. Now, Wangstead faces six felony charges, including attempted murder. Investigators say Wangstead was allegedly angry and wanted to get high, but people in the room with him had hidden his drugs. Court records also suggest that Wangstead had a grenade and said that he would kill anyone who came close to him. West Fargo police have written a, released a written statement about the incident that we have posted at our website, valleynewslive.com. The eyes of the sports world will be focused on Fargo this morning. Former advising QB and projected first-round draft pick Carson Wentz will be taking part in the NDSU Pro Day. Both ESPN and the NFL Network are in town for live coverage. The action at the Fargo Dome is not open to the public, but Valley News Live will have team coverage for you, including from our very own Lisa Badeau. And the day's not just about Wentz either. Dozens of scouts, of course, are in town, and some other former Bison stars will be showing off their skills, including lineman Joe Hag and punter Ben LeCompte. The testing gets started around 9.45 or so this morning. Of course, stay with Valley News Live for coverage all day long. Well, as we know, it has already been quite the week for Mr. Wentz. An ESPN crew shut down a portion of Broadway in front of the Fargo Theater Monday morning for what they called a hero shoot. The segments will be used as part of ESPN's draft coverage next month. ESPN said their goal is to profile Wentz in his college town and home state in creative ways. Pink, yellow, light blue, some of the traditional colors that we think of for Easter. But how can you bring those colors alive in your home this the, time of year? The Valley Today's Christy Larson is live in studio this morning with some easy ideas for decorating for the holiday. Yes, good morning. I'm here with Ashley Morgan with Unglued, and you've come up with a really simple way and kind of a cute little centerpiece for us, too. Yeah, you can showcase your own eggs that you made or kind of take what we did here with the blown out eggs and just adding flowers to them. Yeah, and what I really like, too, is that this is something so simple. You can even have the kids stick what flowers they think that they want in there. And, and too, I like that you have the egg containers that you just painted. Yeah, yeah, we just spray painted egg containers we already had, added some preserved moss, which you don't need to for this to look awesome. And we even did make uh, some beeswax candles in our eggs, too, with some leftover wax that we had. <laughs> That's taking it a step above and beyond. But also, I just wanted to tell people, too, that our uh, bath bombs that we had made earlier um, also are starting to turn out as well. So those are something you could use as a centerpiece for Sunday. Yeah and then use as relaxation afterwards. Yeah, it'd be awesome, and it's really pretty. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so many different ideas, and Kyle and Lisa, again, we're gonna be posting those directions and ideas up on valleynewslive.com, so you don't have to sit there and try to write down all the directions. We'll put them up for you. And lots of great ways too that we all love to get the entire family involved. Yeah. Things that the kids can do, and yep. it's something, stuff for the kids, stuff for mom and dad. And it's, a, it's a great, great, great list of projects. It smells great in here after uh, they made those bath bombs <laughs> it, That as is well. true. It does. Thank you, Christy. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question. Pharmacists say this is the question they get asked most often. The answer, can I drink alcohol with this <laughs> medication? That's a good question. Remember, you can take part in our question of the morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page and joining in on the conversation. Well, today we're looking at a beautiful sunrise developing out there this morning. It should be a nice day with sunny skies throughout the daytime hours. It's chilly this morning. You want to bundle up, but temperatures into the mid 40s. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. Remember, we'll have more local news and weather for you right here in just 25 minutes. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We will see you tomorrow morning.